two romantic screen heroes tend to make wives dissatisfied at home. Do they, Lee Marvin? Connie Stevens? Sal Mineo? <laughs> Gypsy Rose Lee? Oscar Levant? <laughs> Last like that. Susie Parker? Louis Nye? Nena Fabre? Mickey Rooney? We'll have that question answered and some others as our three players try to read the minds of the stars. From Television City in Hollywood, the Celebrity Game. And here's the star of our show, Carl Reiner. Thank you. Thank you, I needed that. The rules. We ask our celebrity panel a question on some popular topic that can be answered yes or no. Then our three players each get a chance to pick a star and tell us how they think the star voted. After every three turns, the players win some cash. $25 each when they're all right, $50 when two are right. And if only one reads the mind of the star correctly, he or she gets $100. All right, panel, take another look at our first question on your cards. Do romantic screen heroes tend to make wives dissatisfied at home? I guess with their husbands. Yes or no? We're going to ask you to lock in your answers electronically by pressing the yes or no button. Would you press the button, please? Their answers can't be changed, but before we get to the first player, listen to this. <laughs> Stop that, Mickey. All right, do romantic screen heroes tend to make wives dissatisfied at home? We'll meet our first player, Ms. Shirley Sarret. Sarret? Right. Sarret. It says here you're a hairdresser to many of the stars. Hairdressers work hard, don't they? Oh, yes. About 12 hours a day. You do work that long? Yes. How many, how many people can you do in 12 hours? You mean movie stars or my customers? <laughs> <laughs> either, either. Well, about um, 25 customers to one movie star. <laughs> you're, you people are tough. All right, would you pick a star, Shirley, and tell us how you think he or she voted? Yes, I choose Gypsy Rose Lee. Gypsy Rose Lee. And um, I think she would think that it would be the man that would live in the dream world. All right, so you vote yes or no? No. You vote no. Are you looking for a no from Gypsy Rose Lee? You get a no. Yes, uh, I vote as no, uh, because I think one is fantasy and uh, the other is reality and women are too realistic to confuse them. Um, besides, I think women, uh, well, you know, we sort of realize that a husband in the nest is worth uh, ten up on that screen. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing, I think women aren't, uh, aren't really stupid, you know. We know all about these swashbuckling heroes. Bet your life. What swashes on the screen sometimes buckles at all. <laughs> We'll meet, we'll meet our well, second place. I'll tell player. you this, Mr. Reiner, uh, on account of that last remark, I'd just like to say that a lot of times people like myself have to buckle with most people's wives. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll meet our second player, Edward Gelb. It says here that you're a sergeant with the Los Angeles Police Department, and you never miss the opening night of a big movie in Hollywood. You, you must love motion pictures, I guess. Well, actually, I never get inside to see them. Uh, my job is uh, keeping the fans from mobbing the stars. You know the stars very well? Well, yes, but I know the people who mob them quite a bit better. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gelb, would you pick a star, please? Oh, I uh, pick Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin. And uh, I think he feels that uh, women don't need an excuse to be dissatisfied. So you vote? No. You vote no. All right, we have a no vote look for, and Mr. Marvin gives you a yes vote. <laughs> Romantic screen heroes tend to make wives dissatisfied at home, you feel? Romantic screen heroes? Ball players, groceries. Any, any guy that's a husband, I think, tends to make any woman feel dissatisfied at home. I will right, meet Miss Celine McDonald. Says you're a law student and a perpetual movie fan. Who's your favorite star? Oh, I like them all. Um, but actually, I'm very much impressed with Gypsy Rose Lee. You are? <laughs> yes, indeed. Tell us why. I'm, uh... Name one picture she's been in. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that Gypsy Rose Lee has a very broad knowledge of anthropology, and it's my hobby, too. 
Oh, well, all right, then, uh, yes, Mr. Levant. I've been doing research in, uh, in archaeology. I just discovered my own remains. <laughs> Uh, Celine, would you pick a star, please? Sal Minio. Sal Minio. I believe uh, he'd say no. On the subject, of romantic screen heroes tend to make the wives dissatisfied at home. You're looking for a no answer, and you get a no answer. He wants all the credit. <laughs> no, you know, Lee, I don't know about the other romantic screen heroes, but I tend to satisfy a lot of wives. <laughs> Righty. Shirley and Sullivan were both right. They get $50 apiece for their efforts. We'll continue this with Edward Gelb. Mr. Gelb. Uh, I pick Louis Nye. Louis Nye. I think he'd say no, uh, no more than a Bridget Bardot would make a husband dissatisfied. <laughs> You're looking for a no for Louis Nye, and you get... You get yes. A lot of us screen people and heroes. <laughs> supply that necessary unknown quantity that the ladies don't know and they look forward to it. Get they on think with it. they think I am Mickey rolling right along there. Uh, they feel that the uh, husband is a man that comes home and opens up the ice box and takes out a beer, click, newspaper, and that's it. They don't know that the movie fella does the same thing. Well, they only see him when he's got the shirt on properly and the tie for him. <laughs> Eyebrows made up properly. Quick guardy looks that make him Freddy adorable. I hope I've been clear. All right, we'll go to Celine McDonald. Uh, Susie Parker. Susie Parker. I think she'd say no, and I'm basing it merely on intuition. All right, you're looking for no answer from Susie Parker, and let's see what you got. You got a no. On, on whose intuition? Mine or yours? <laughs> Be mutual. Uh, well, yes, no. Because, um, you see, I feel I have a romantic screen hero at home. So, I, and, I, and I think so many women admire in uh, movie idols what they have in their husbands. They see a similarity. So I don't think that it makes a woman dissatisfied at all. It's quite profound, but I don't understand it. <laughs> 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 ah, ah, ah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah. He makes me dissatisfied just sitting next to her. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll love to climb that balcony. <laughs> Stay where you are, Oscar. I'd just like to say how happy I am that I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shirley, would you pick a star, please? Yes. Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney. He says no, because I think he knows that no tall, dark, and handsome movie star has any more than he has. Oh. <laughs> for a no answer, and you better give her no. She deserves the money. Yes. Uh, well, actually, I think, uh, not to be too philosophical, but uh, I believe that uh, any intelligent woman uh, who is uh, in love with their husband, basically, uh, tends to see uh, motion picture stars for what they are as for sheer entertainment. And right. I'm sure that... Uh, <laughs> They're satisfied more or less with a situation that comes about from knowing where uh, this leads and <laughs> finds out more or less in their own good time. Mr. Levant, would you, care to, would you care to comment on that, Mr. Levant? I know you bursting to. Well, I could suggest to Mickey what has happened to me. I've been invited to join one of the many gun clubs in South Southern California as a target. <laughs> All right, both, both Shirley and Celine were right on that. They get $50 a piece. Let's continue with Celine. Hey, Connie Stevens. Connie Stevens. And I think I'll trust my intuition twice. And I think she is said no. Is she Hopefully. said, you're looking for no from Connie Stevens. Let's see what you got. You got a no. Well, first of all, I'm married to a, one of those screen heroes, and I'm not dissatisfied at all at home. It's <laughs> great. <laughs> but besides that, you know, by the way, all those screen actors aren't all romantic heroes. <laughs> besides, so um, I don't think so. <laughs> a romantic hero creeping next to you. 
that's all I have to say on the subject. Mr. Levant has a... I just want to make a remark about Miss Stevens. She's very pretty and very young. In 20 years from now, I'll still be too old for you. <laughs> How do we know? All right, Edward Gelb. Uh, Nanette Fabre. Nanette I'll, Fabre. Uh, pick no. She knows that movie heroes are just like other men off screen. All right, you're looking just for... plain Bill. Just plain You're looking for no and you get... No. Oh, but I don't think that's true. I'm a big movie fan. But I gave you a no for another reason. You know, it depends on what kind of a movie hero that you have in mind. Let's take, for example, the part that... Fl that uh, um... Wally Berry. Yeah, well, I probably did. Oh, come on. No, but uh, what was the fellow in Streetcar Named Desire? Stanley Marlon Kowalski. Brando. Marlon Brando. Yeah. You know, he walked... What about all right, honey? Great <laughs> Right. Stella. That's going to make a wife dissatisfied at home when she looks and sees her husband sitting there. It's the same thing. You know? And not only that, when somebody says, Now, look at here, you dirty rat. You don't need to bother. I mean, you can't expect to find that in every home. <laughs> We'll go to Shirley Surrett. Oh, Oscar Levant says yes. Oscar Levant says yes. I think it, he would think it would be a woman's prerogative to be that stupid. <laughs> All right, what let's Oscar see Levant if say? he gave her a yes, Mr. Yeah. Levant. I didn't, did I say yes? No, you said no. I said, let's see if you did. You, you didn't. You confuse me because I, I, uh, <laughs> I am sodden, besotted. You know what besotted means? No. Stupefied with drink. <laughs> Don't drink though. You were drinking coffee backstage. Well, it's been spiked. I, uh, you, underestimate, you underestimate my wife. She is not at all taken in by actors. She is slightly by good actors. Well, you can't be in love with Cary Grant over 35 years. What's the use of kidding? <laughs> she liked Gabby Hayes once. All right, all right in, that round, in that round, both Edwin and Celine were right. They get $50 a piece for their efforts. Scorekeeper, how did the panel vote? On the question of screen heroes making housewives dissatisfied, our panel voted two yes, seven no. A famous English actress, I think it was Margaret Rutherford, told someone that the reason she is so happy is that she married a man 10 years younger than she. I'm most anxious to hear what you have to say about this panel. So look at your cards. Should a woman, the question says, should a woman marry a man 10 years younger than she? We'll ask you to vote yes or no by pressing your panel buttons. Press, please. We'll be back to play the next round of Celebrity Game right after this message. <laughs> He's terrible. Mickey is terrible. All right. Should a woman marry a man 10 years younger than she? All right. We'll go to Shirley Surrett. Will you pick a star, please? So many of says no. Just like that. Sal Mineo, you think, says no. He married a woman 10 years older than he. She'd have to be a mother to him, and I don't think he needs one. All right, you're looking for a no vote from Sal Mineo. Well, let's see what you got. Yes. <laughs> you think a woman should marry a man 10 years younger than she? Sure, why not? No, I think if a woman is over 21, she could marry, um, you know, anybody uh, she wants. Sure, 11-year-old boy. <laughs> Where was you brought up? Uh, you, can't, you can't tell. Sometimes an 11 year old kid can be a, a sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> On to Edward Gelb. Uh, Edward, pick a star. <coughs> Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney. I think uh, he'd say no, because I think he'd say that uh, women would lie about their age anyway. Oh, all right. You're looking for a no vote from Mickey Rooney. What did you get? No. Well, you got to know, but uh, I, I had uh, only two choices, yes and no. <laughs> you know, Mickey, everybody has that same tough thing here. Yes, but uh, unfortunately, by, by saying no, I don't, I mean not necessarily, because I think it's a flexible situation naturally. I think if uh, two people tend to fall in love, I don't believe that age should be any barrier, uh, barrier whatsoever. Uh, I think that you should uh, be just be... Age. Well, I mean, uh, Oscar, the reason I say that is because uh, I, I've had, I've, I've married at different levels of life. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of have gone I've to different plateaus. Success story. <laughs> you know, he's done a graph system on his marriages. <laughs> All right, we'll go. High, low, medium. Uh, we'll go to Celine. Uh, Gypsy Rose Lee. Gypsy Rose Lee. I believe she would vote yes. I think she'd feel that compatibility is more important than age. You're looking for a yes vote from Gypsy Rose Lee. And you get a yes vote. I voted yes, but I wasn't thinking of compatibility at all. <laughs> you know, they say that uh, 
most women outlive their husbands. And I think that's because women usually marry men 10 or 15 years older than they are. And I think it's about time we reverse that trend. <laughs> that hasn't got anything uh, to do with it. Uh, yeah, well, I think so, Mickey. Why? Uh, well, I don't think a 25-year-old woman should marry a 15-year-old um, no. uh, boy. No, no, I don't think that. But I don't see why a mellow, ripe woman of 50 can't marry a tired man of 40. <laughs> Edwin and Stellan were both right. They get $50 a piece for their efforts, and we'll go to Shirley. Uh, Lee Marvin says yes. You're looking for a yes vote from Lee Marvin. I think that he would think that a woman should take a man any way she could get him. All right. <laughs> we'll see what Mr. Marvin gave you. He gave you a yes vote. You're on the right track. Uh, I feel that uh, a woman should marry a man younger than herself with a 10-year edge because this allows her to get all those childish little ideas about romance and love out of her mind so that by the time she gets married she's ready to go to work on whatever the reason she got married for <laughs> all right we'll go to edward gelb uh connie stevens connie stevens i think she'd say no i think she feels a woman uh, should have a man to look up to you're looking for a no vote from Connie Stevens. What do you do, like basketball? <laughs> you got a no vote. Well, I think that if, if um, marrying a younger man like that places too much demand on the, the uh, male. Uh, first of all, if I can explain this correctly, I think that girls advance much, much faster than young men do. And um, since the basic need of a woman is to find strength in the family, I think it places too much demand on him because... Um, you constantly want to look up to him, as you say, and depend on him. And if he's kind of young and childish, it gets a little in the way. <laughs> I think you and I have won. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Celine. Oscar Levant. Oscar Levant. Well, you're a girl of intuition. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, I think that you would say uh, yes. All right, yes. you're looking for a yes, yes vote from Mr. Levant. You got a no vote. Incidentally, there are a lot of elder women who attract to a, a type boy that I would classify as epicene. And if you ask me what it is, I'll tell you, it isn't bad. What is epicene, Oscar? It means having qualities of neither sex, meaning sexless. Now, you can't cut that out. <laughs> All right. All right. Both Shirley and Edward were right. They get $50 apiece for their efforts. We'll continue with Shirley. Uh, Susie Parker says yes. You're looking for a yes Because vote. I don't think anything would be a problem for her. You're looking for a yes vote from Susie Parker. And Susie gives you a no. I don't think it would be fair. To who? And um, I think that's very important. Also, a woman wants to... I'll make it simpler than that. It would simply be too emotionally expensive. That's all. A young man for an older woman. I think it would be crazy. Well, who would suffer? The woman. Oh. The fellow. <laughs> you mean the fellow the, the fella wouldn't, wouldn't derive any uh, fringe benefit? <laughs> yes, I see a lot of hands going. Oscar, do you have something to say? I don't know why Mickey inserted a political phrase like fringe benefits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go to Edward Gelb. Louis Nye. Louis Nye. I think he would say no. I think he'd say no unless she had a lot of money. You're looking for a no vote from Louis Nye. You got a no vote. I voted no, fella. <laughs> <laughs> I think a uh, man has it tough enough. So he should, uh, if he can, always marry somebody older or a younger. Man should marry somebody older. <laughs> He's very definite. Married. It's a good thing for him. <laughs> A man ends up, as he gradually ages, he gets a little senile, he gets giggly and silly, <laughs> a little immature. So he gets so balled up that he thinks it's his mommy there. <laughs> he gets to say, nye, 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 nye. Yeah. There is something there. <laughs> We're I think definitely. We're going to talk about it a lot after the show. <laughs> and all of us are going to have a party to find out what's Royce there. Royce Brothers has a new patient. I can <laughs> <laughs> all right. Silla, would you pick a star? 
Nanette Fabre. Nanette Fabre. I think she'd vote no. I think that she'd think that it would make for problems in the marriage. You're looking for no vote from Nanette Fabre, and you get a yes vote. You should marry a man, yes. Well, I think any woman that has the courage to admit that she's 10 years older than a fellow deserves to get him. <laughs> In that round, only Edward was right. He gets $100 for his effort. Scorekeeper, how did the panel vote? On the question of a woman marrying a man 10 years younger, our panel voted four yes, five no. Well, there's no decision there. Do what you want, folks. We'll play another round of the celebrity game right after this message. For our next round, we're going to go to Paris, France. I asked a man one question there, but his answer led to another question, which we'll be asking our panel. Listen and watch. We're at the bank of the Seine River, and we're about to meet a gentleman who lives and works in Paris. My name is Cyril Goranov. That's not a Parisian name. I'm Bulgarian, sir. That's a good reason to have a Bulgarian name. You're right. Do you believe large families make for a happier marriage, sir? In France, I believe. Why in France? Because the more children there are in the family, the more money they get from the government. Oh, the government gives you money for having children? Sir, Mr. de Gaulle is giving them money. Well, how, many, how much does he give you? About $200 for eight children. $200 for eight children? <laughs> Not worth it. <laughs> Those are the statistics. Now, this is the question we'd like to ask our panel. Should the United States government subsidize children as they do in France? We'll ask you to vote yes and no on that question. Press, press your buttons, please. All pressed? Players, this is your chance to win some extra money in larger amounts. The panel is locked in their answers on the final question. We want you to tell us how you think the majority voted, yes or no. If you're all correct, you get $100 each. If two are right, $150. And if only one reads the panel correctly, it's worth $300. So place your yes or no card in front of you and don't reveal your answer. Before we get the total vote and see how you did, let's talk to the panel. Is everybody pressed there now? Everybody pressed? I don't remember if I did or not. Yeah. All right, I'll ask the question again, and you can press again. Should the United States government... I'm too exhausted to press again. <laughs> Should the United States government subsidize children as they do in France? Press your buttons again, please, just to make sure they're all pressed. All right, are we all pressed now? Wonderful. Oh, then Nanette Fabre. Would I vote? You voted no. Why well, voted no? Well, it's, you know, it's hard enough to keep up with the Joneses as it is. <laughs> I got ten. I got a thousand dollars. How much did you get? <laughs> it doesn't work. I don't care. Mickey, <laughs> <laughs> how did you vote? Well, I I voted no, Carl, simply because uh, children are an act of God, and that uh, should not be treated as a lottery. I believe that we shouldn't incite anybody to say that we want children, or that uh, children are just uh, that women are just bearing children from monetary gains. They are an act of love, an act of God, and that is my reason. All right, we'll go now to Connie Stevens. I think the government controls so many things that I think they should leave something up to the rugged individual. <laughs> All right, let's find out how Sal Minio voted. He voted no. Uh, his parents are getting $200 for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's to buy my own zip guns. And... <laughs> no, I, seriously, I think definitely not. And I just think it would be dangerous. And I really can't say anything funny about it. I mean, I, I could not uh, say anything more about it. I just don't think it would be right. All right. We'll go now to Gypsy Rose Lee. Oh, I don't approve of it at all. And if I did approve of it, but I don't think the money is enough. <laughs> the majority vote on this subject? On the question of government subsidies for children, the majority of our celebrities voted no. One yes, eight no. All right, one yes and eight no. Now, Shirley, if you voted no, you've made some money. How did you vote? You got at least $100. Edward, at least 100 for you. Celine? You just made $50 apiece for your two friends. In that round, Ed was the big winner. With $400, 300 for Shirley, 200 for Celine. Thank you for playing the game, and I hope you use the money well. Watch our show. You owe it to us. 
Thank you, panel. You've been a wonderful delight. And please come back and play Celebrity Game with us again. You might find anyone in Hollywood on our panel, except you know who, right? <laughs> Don't miss our next show. Good night. The Celebrity Game has been brought to you by Lipton Instant Tea. Makes iced tea with fresh brewed flavor. Tastes so good, you know it's Lipton instantly. It's been a Merrill Heater, Bob Quigley production in association with Four Star Television.